So now we got to our last step. So when we get an EKG, what's the main thing we're trying to figure out? If the patient has ischemia, right? There's five different ischemias that a patient could have or could present on an EKG. So the first one is peak T waves. Peak T waves we rarely see because they happen right away when a patient's having ischemia. It actually happens within minutes. So because patients usually come to the hospital after at least half an hour or some time um, of having chest pain, we usually don't see this on the EKG. We actually see some of the other changes. But let's say someone's in the hospital, they have an EKG on, and they start having new ischemia, you can see peak T waves. So that's the first thing that you see with ischemia. Next, you have the ST depressions and ST elevations, which we'll kind of show examples of. After that, you start getting T wave inversions. And if a patient had an infarct for already a few days or a long time ago, you'll have scar tissue presenting as Q waves. So whenever we talk about ischemia, it's really important to know the different walls and the arteries that's, that are corresponding to the leads on the EKG. The first one I like to start off with are the inferior leads. So two, three, and AVF. These are important because they are the inferior leads and they're supplied by the RCA usually. And if there is involvement or a STEMI in these leads, it could mean that there is RV involvement. So as we mentioned before in our first video, you want to get a right side EKG, specifically a V4R lead. Because if this shows that there's ST elevations in V4R, that means that the right ventricle is involved and the treatment is completely different. Meaning you do not give these patients nitro and you actually give them fluid because they're preload dependent. So remember, if you see ST elevations in the inferior leads, 2, 3, and ABF, you want to check a right-sided lead, V4R, to make sure that they don't have um, RV involvement. If they do, don't give them nitro, give them fluids because they're preload dependent. Next, I look at V1 and V2. These are also known as the septal leads, and they're supplied by the proximal LAD. But it's important because if you see isolated ST elevations in V1 and V2, and you don't see them in the other procordial leads, such as V3 through V6, it could also mean that there's RV involvement, because V1 and V2 can also be supplied by the RCA. So yet again, you get V4R to make sure that there's no RV involvement. If there is, you don't give nitro, and you do give fluids, because these patients are preload dependent. But let's say V1 and V2 have some ST elevations, and then V3 and V4 also have ST elevations. V3 and V4 represent the anterior leads, and they're supplied by the mid-LAD. Similarly, kind of going down the LAD, you have V5, V6. These are the, um, the apical leads, and they're supplied by the distal LAD. And here you kind of see that it's apical or lateral. And this is important because if V5 and V6 have, show ST elevations, and then the leads on the left hand of the EKG1 and AVL also show ST elevations, this means that this patient likely has lateral wall involvement. If they have lateral wall involvement, um, you kind of also want to differentiate whether it's supplied from the LAD or from the left circ. If there's isolated ST elevations in 1 and AVL, that means it's high lateral, meaning most of the damage is, uh, most of the ischemia is due to the left circumflex artery and not necessarily from the LAD. If it's both ST elevations in V5, V6, and one in AVL, it's probably both LAD and left circumflex. And we rarely look at it for certain pathologies, but ST elevations in AVR are significant, especially when you have other reciprocal changes in the other leads. So it's important to always look at AVR as well, even though it's opposite to everything else, because if you do have an ST elevation there, it can be pathologic. This is a very busy slide. It's a lot to memorize. It's something that you can try to memorize at first, but honestly, it's easier just seeing more and more EKGs. And after you kind of see several uh, patients with NSTEMIs and STEMIs, you'll kind of get a hang of which leads correlate to which artery and which wall. So now let's look at some examples. Whenever I'm looking for ischemia, I try to read the EKG from top to bottom, left to right. So I always start with lead one and I end with V6. So let's just go kind of through this EKG one lead at a time. If we start at lead one, we see that there's no peak T waves. We don't see any ST elevations, but we do see these ST depressions. The way we determine if someone has an ST depression is we draw a line from the PR interval 
to the next PR interval. And this kind of gives us a baseline. If someone has a one small box um, deviation of the ST segment below or above this line, then they have either an ST depression if it's below or an ST elevation if it's above. What's important to know is with ST elevations, in the precordial leads, they have to have two small boxes of elevation for it to be an STL elevation. Otherwise, in the LIN leads of 1, 2, 3, AVR, AVL, AVF, you just need one small box. So going back to lead 1, here we see that there is an ST depression. We don't see any Q waves, and we, don't, uh, and we see maybe some T wave inversions. Next, moving to lead 2, we see the classic tombstoning ST elevations. So this is a classic uh, STEMI where you have these kind of clear tombstones. As you remember, these, these kind of upside down um, sad faces are uh, significant for MI, while if you have a kind of smoother slope of the ST elevation, that's a smiley face, they're less concerning for an MI. So here you see this kind of upside down smiley face, so this person has an ST elevation, a very significant one. Same thing in the three you see kind of a very large ST elevation. Then we move to AVR. If we draw a line here, you see that there is an ST depression. There is no Q waves, um, maybe some T wave inversions, but no peak T waves. AVL, same thing, we draw a line. You have ST depressions. You don't see any Q waves, you don't see any peak T waves, and you see T wave inversions. Moving to AVF, we also see ST elevations. Um, no Q waves, no T wave inversions, no peak T waves. And now we move to the precordial leads. So in V1, we don't really see any ischemic changes for the most part. Um, however, if we move to V2, we see these significant ST depressions. In V3, again, we don't see many um, ischemic changes. There's no Q, uh, no Q waves, no peak T waves, maybe some slight uh, ST elevation, but like we said, if we draw a line, it doesn't meet the two box criteria. However, moving to V4 and V5 and V6, we see that all of them do have ST elevations. So it's important to note here that this patient has ST depressions in 1 and AVL. They have ST elevations in 2, 3, and AVF, which are the inferior leads. And then they also have ST elevations in V4, V5, V6, which are the um, anterior and um, apical leads. So this person has an inferior uh, anterior apical infarct with reciprocal changes in one in AVL, the lateral leads, and then at the septal leads as well. So now looking at the next EKG, we read it the same way, going from one to three, uh, left to right, ending with V6. So starting with 1, we see here there's no real ischemic changes, no Q waves, no peak T waves, no T wave inversions, no ST elevations or depressions. But then when we move to lead 2, we do see that there are some ST depressions. So if we draw that line from the PR interval to PR interval, we see that there is at least one box deviation below that interval. There's no significant T wave inversions or peak T waves. Um, and no Q waves. Same thing in lead three, we see some SD depressions if we draw the line. And then we move to AVR, where if we draw a line from the PR to the PR interval, we see that maybe there's an ST elevation uh, above that line. Moving to AVL, we see again that there might be a slight ST elevation above that. It might be one box, especially in the second beat. And these are the type of uh, ST elevations that are hard to catch because they seem like they are maybe just a little bit above the ST uh, segment, or sorry, above the PR segment, but they actually do constitute an ST elevation. So this is a patient that is having a STEMI. Looking at AVF, you also have ST depressions here. And then in the precordial leads is where we actually do see the ST elevations. So looking at V1, and we draw a line from the PR interval to the PR interval, we see that this point is significantly elevated above uh, the, ST, the PR segment. So this is an ST elevation. Looking at V2, we see that a little bit more prominently. And then V3, we start seeing the classic tombstoning appearance. So what I like about this EKG is if you look at V3, you have the classic ST elevation. 
but in v2, v1, it looks a little bit less so, and especially in AVL, it's very subtle. So if we just had ST elevations like the one in AVL or in V1, it's very easy for these STEMIs to be missed because people are expecting to see these ST elevations that we see in V3 when in reality we see those more subtle ones. So it's important to not miss these types of ST elevations. In V4, V5, V6, we also see some slight ST elevations in V4 and V5 and then a little bit less so in V6. So here we have ST elevations in um, AVL and then V1 and V2, which are the septal leads, V3, V4, which are the anterior leads, and V5, V6, which are the ap apical leads. So this is a septal anterior lateral infarct, likely from the LAD. So when we talk about ST elevations, it's also important to note that there are some ST elevations that are not STEMIs. So there's this awesome lecture series called the Louisville Lecture Series. For anyone that's in, in internal medicine, it's great, uh, great board review prep. Uh, there's a doctor, Dr. Brown, there that gives us great cardiology lectures. And one of the slides that she has there is all the different types of ST elevations that patients could have. What's important to note are these first two, because those are the ones that you'll see most, most often. So LVH, or left ventricular hypertrophy, and left bundle branch block, or LBBB, these are ones that can cause ST elevations in patients that aren't STEMIs. So because of how big the QRS uh, complex depolarization is, it causes an increase or like a lift of the ST segment, and it causes these pseudo-ST elevations that look like STEMIs, but they're not necessarily STEMIs. What's important to note here is always, always, always compare prior the current EKGs to prior EKGs to make sure that this isn't new and make sure that they're not having chest pain because if they're having chest pain and they do have a left bundle or LVH um, and they do have this ST elevation, it could still be a STEMI. So if you do this for every EKG from now on, you won't be, miss big abnormalities. So if you go through these steps of name, date, looking at the speed and gain, uh, you quickly go through the rate, rhythm, axis, you look at the morphologies of the QRS complex, checking for bundle branch blocks and AV blocks, and lastly, go through ischemia. If you look through that for every EKG, you won't miss big things for your patients. It is a lot. It will take a few minutes to go through EKGs um, the first time you're using this method, but after looking at hundreds of EKGs, you'll be able to do it in seconds. Thank you for listening, and I hope this has been helpful.